Hello, and welcome to another episode of Talk in the Microphone, where we go through Logan Whitehurst's entire solo discography. I am Connor Nyberg, and I am a personal avid fan of Logan Whitehurst. And my name's Owen Otto, and I was a personal friend of Logan's, and played in a band with him, and uh, played on some of his recordings. And today we go through Logan's 1999 masterpiece, How Does an Electrostatic Motor Work? I can tell you how it works. Tell me, please. But I'm only going to tell you after we get through the whole album. Ah, oh, <laughs> dang it. So at the beginning of this album, Logan, Logan says that by the time we reach the end of the album, we'll know how an electrostatic motor works. Um, I've listened to this album uh, at least a dozen times. I still can't tell you. So maybe, maybe, maybe thirteenth listen. Maybe that's the lucky listen. So maybe by the end of this, we'll, we will know how an electrostatic motor works. I don't even know what an electrostatic motor is. I don't either. But I'm, I'm assuming we'll somehow know everything. All, all answers will be revealed <laughs> at the end of this episode. Indeed, indeed. So. This this is an interesting release for Logan. Um, I believe wasn't this his very first online release? I think that may be true. Yes, because you if you think back to this time, I don't know if you can think back to this time. Uh, pro- if you <laughs> if you hearken back to this time, um, the internet was a very new and exciting phenomena, and um, before. AOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was maybe, uh, yeah, I mean, at this time, we're still, like, looking up stuff on Yahoo to uh, find anything. And yes. mp3.com came along and seemed like it was the future. Where <laughs> artists could make music and upload it to the internet, and other people could find it and download it. So instead of Logan having to, like, dub cassettes and sort of like sell those people in person at shows you could actually get the music from anywhere that mean that that was a really like big game changer like i'm surprised that mp3.com isn't in like the history books of the interwebs because i mean that i mean back then 1999 people were still trying to figure out how to use the internet for music in ways that weren't illegal aka napster and, um, I mean, mp3.com was basically the band camp of its time in that people could upload their own music to the internet, um, other people could download it, or, um, I believe they could make CDs too, right? mp3.com had this, um, CD distribution service where they would make CDs of your content and then send them out to people who ordered them, and so you would, in turn, make some money off of that. Yeah, and that was a, the, the main thing about it that was a big deal was not necessarily making money per se, but just that in our band when we made CDs, it was such a big deal. Like to have a CD was yeah. such a big deal and uh, it meant you were, you were real and, <laughs> <laughs> and you, but to do it, you had to put out, you know, thousands of dollars and you okay. had to, and you had to do, you had to prepare the artwork, had to be in these kind of like, uh, like get a, have a photographic, uh, I don't remember exactly, but I remember like the getting the prep to have it printed was really difficult. Oh yeah, but I believe um yeah, Littleton Frog's final EP, uh, Netophobia, that was an MP3.com exclusive release too, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly, because then you could just make the amount that you needed. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, this, this really was a huge game changer in independent music and distribution, and um, in turn, it also garnered Logan a online following so people from like michigan or florida could finally listen to his music and enjoy it and not have to be there in petaluma so he had basically kind of a national scene starting to bubble up yeah yeah exactly i was listening to this uh, interview with him a few weeks ago that reminded me of that that i guess he got kind of with this album known a bit from uh, being on the comedy charts yeah exactly um one or two songs from this album actually did re- make it to Dr. Demento. And uh, on, um, I believe uh, Monkeys Are Bad People, which we'll get to, made it into the Funny Five for one week. So, I mean, that, that really helped as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was really cool. It seemed super exciting to be able to distribute your stuff on the internet. 
Yeah, exactly. And I, I think Logan took full advantage of that. And um, so we'll go through here track by track of his first online release, How Does an Electrostatic Motor Work? The first track is titled, How Does an Electrostatic <laughs> Motor Work? Oh, I can't wait to find out. Ooh, here we go. Hello there. My name is Logan. How does an electrostatic motor work? I sure as heck don't know, but I do know this. By the time this album is finished, you will know to have digitally inserted subliminal messages into the music of this album. Here's my friend Gunther to explain more. Focuses on the music while your inner mind hears and responds to selected subliminal messages embedded in the music of the album. Hey, thanks, Gunther. Well, I hope you enjoy the album. I sure as heck had fun making it. So that was how does an electrostatic motor work? And uh, it seems that we'll know by the time this album's over. At least subliminally. At least subconsciously, we will understand the importance and the know-how of how electrostatic motor works. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to getting to that sublime state. I, I love me some <laughs> sublime records. So, uh... <laughs> Logan, all Logan has to say on this track is, The album needed an introduction. I felt it would be important to the future of humanity to destroy a beer drinking record. And uh, I feel like I, I feel like that holds up true even to this day. Yeah, it's definitely, this is a, it's a very Logan intro. Yes. And uh, from this very Logan-y intro, we go into the very Logan-y track, Prosthetic Brain. I could be a politician, roll my socks up and go fishing, put my money in a box and bury it forever. I could be a television, turn me on while you are fishing, listen to the weatherman and learn about the weather. Prosthetic brain, running backwards in the rain like a train. Going back to where it came from Empty now and lighter than it once was A fine analogy Are you ready to talk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was just, I was jamming out to that thing. <laughs> I know, it's a good one. It is, it's a uh, prosthetic brain. Um, <laughs> later remade on Goodbye My 4 track, but I mean, here you get the whole kinks of the track. It's, it's all there. Yeah, I think it's so good. I think this is one of his best. Yeah. And um, and it's interesting because um, with this being his online release, he also started predominantly recording on his computer. So here you get to hear Logan me messing with cool special effects and multi-track layering that he wouldn't be able to do before on a four-track cassette recorder. Yeah, it's unclear to me what he was recording on at this time. I don't really remember. I know that around this time I got Pro Tools. Yeah. So it could record really well on my computer, but I don't think he had any really good setup for recording on his computer. But I think okay. what you're saying is true, though. Yeah, I, I think he was recording more on his computer, but I think it was still kind of hacky. Yeah, yeah. Because um, he says here, he says there are about nine vocal tracks on the song. It also marks the first time I've ever used a tuba for the bass line, one of my favorites. So, uh, like, right there, you get to hear of all the different experiments and stuff, like, um, during the bridge, especially, you can hear these vocal tracks doing like the woo, 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 woo. Yeah, it's really good. I love it. It seems like the next step in the evolution from that uh, breakdown on the um, this is what happens when you have Logan a four track kind of bridge. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and he, he's just building on it a lot more. But the vocal are all the different vocal parts are really well arranged. It's, yes. It's really amazing. Now, um, what is what is he saying? Um, Near the end, um, I get, um, he's singing Prosthetic Brain, Running Backwards in the Rain, and in the background, the ba background vocals are singing something completely different, like, um, like, locomotive, cold cart, dining cart, sleeping on, or something. Locomotive. I never could... Yeah, I never did either. Locomotive, coal car, I think? I think that would coal be a car. car. One, I, so one thing I know that's interesting about this is, um, he told me that he had that part first. Oh, wow. That, and then he was, uh, 
It might have been with the prosthetic brain and that part going together. I don't know. But that's yeah. what he had first. And uh, he just had a recording of that. And um, <laughs> uh, and Judah, he played it for Judah, uh, who was also in our band and was later in the Velveteen and yeah. uh, with Logan. And Judah thought that, oh, that sounds like the outro of a song. And so then he kind of wrote the rest of the song around it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely works. Okay, so here, here's what it says. It says, locomotive, coal car, dining car, sleeping car. That's all it says. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> it, it builds on the like a train going backwards. And <laughs> that's just, that's, that's so yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think he just, I think it was just kind of an exercise in um, all these different vocal melodies going at the same time. Yeah, and I mean, it works. It, it's excellent. I... Um, the only thing that this version is missing is like the backing band. I feel like the backing band on the Goodbye My Four track really adds it. And um, um, the bridge, I think there's only half of the bridge. He says, um, this is my um, synaptic heart officiality you see. And um, he finally added later to that, um, provided by the Ace Prosthetic Brain Replacement Company. But that ah. version isn't on this one here. Yeah, it's funny. I thought that I liked the original ones more than the Goodbye My Four Track versions of songs. But when I listened to this, I was like, oh no, the Goodbye My Four Track one is better with the whole band. Yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. And because um, I think the drumming track on this one is also just completely reversed. And I like the transition from the reverse to the, the normal drum kit. And Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One uh, other, uh, one cool thing I knew about this song. Um, one time, Logan actually kind of told me a little bit about the meaning of it, yeah. uh, what he was thinking. Um, it was something like uh, the part where he's talking about like going fishing and uh, let's see, what are the lyrics in the first verse? Give that hand. Um, I could be a politician, roll my socks up and go fishing, put my money in a box and bury it forever. Um, I could be a television, turn me on while you are fishing, listen to the weatherman and learn about the weather. Exactly. So it's sort of like the idea that you would go outside when you're supposed to be experiencing the outdoors and uh, be watching TV to find out what the weather is. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of the uh, the nugget of what he was thinking in it, he, he was telling me. That it's kind of like um, fake experience. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's what he means by the prosthetic brain. Interesting. So kind of like um, experiencing the world through through a television when you're already outside anyway. Exactly. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Kind of sounds like a VR there. It's it's that's interesting. One other thing in this song that I always, that every time I listen to it, I think about it is um, that I could be a brontosaurus, much too big to <laughs> use the Doris. Yeah. Okay, like that is like a that is like a a bad lyric in a way that would if I were writing the song, it, I would just be stuck there. I'd be, like, I'd be like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And then maybe I just wouldn't even finish the song. <laughs> and so I think that's kind of a little bit of the genius is to just keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is definitely I um, personally this is one of my favorite Logan songs. I, I really enjoy it and. To hear it here, um, hear all, him all, figuring it all out and doing all these experiments and stuff, and it, it's just, it's awesome. I really do enjoy it, and I love it. It's great. Yeah, Masterpiece. Yes. And uh, speaking of Masterpiece, we come to Lawful of Death. definitely a more pro version than the previous one. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it definitely builds on what what little tiny bit there was from the the first version, and it it, it turns into a wholehearted song. It's it's amazing. Yeah, and I, well, I mean, listening to the first version, I mean, I, I would think, I mean, okay, that's a cool little jam, but I wouldn't think, is it from Belgium? No, no accent. I, <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my favorite lyric in the whole song. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if he just made it longer so he could play it longer live. Maybe. I, that's, <laughs> I, that's actually a, a good way of doing it. Yeah, it's really cool to hear the, the versions evolve. Yeah, exactly. And it's got um, a great groove. Um, and in and, and this version, too, because with um, his first release, you know, it was very much experimental, very much trying to figure out all these little um, technical kinks and all that. On this one, it, it's still kind of experimental. Like it's got the reverse lyrics at the end, but it's not the main focus of the song. It, the song it, itself actually takes center stage. Yeah, yeah, it's a little more confident. Yeah. Logan says, "This is now a jam song, but it used to be a weird, scratchy little song on a tiny keyboard. Now it's big and scary, like King Kong." <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. That's that's, that's that's quite a simile. I like it. <laughs> this is the King Kong of Logan Whitehurst music. <laughs> Waffle of Death. It's haunting. What, what do you think of Waffle of Death, Owen? I think it's terrifying. <laughs> it is. I would, <laughs> I would much, much prefer a pancake of death. Pan, yeah, pancake of death is a little more, um, a little, a little better. <laughs> especially covered in syrup, you know. But waffle, especially Ego Waffle of Death. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> but you know, I, um, yeah, this song is definitely one of, of Logan's really good ones, and I don't think it gets too much attention. It's the baby that doesn't get enough attention, so it has to has to scream out like King Kong, and so it it it's good. I like but it. on this show, it's getting all the love it deserves. It is. It's getting all the the, the <laughs> warm the warmth and and care that any any little baby should. <laughs> we'll cradle it. Cradle it, you know. Hush, little waffle, don't say <laughs> Now, up next, though, is a song that has gotten quite a bit of attention, especially when it came out. And in fact, I believe got Logan some of his first national attention. You know what that song is, Owen? Indeed, I do. That song what is, is called it? Monkeys Are Bad People. And it's so true. Oh. <laughs> yes, son? I found a monkey. Gonna keep it? God, no, son! Get that monkey out of here! Why, daddy? Why? <laughs> Let me explain, son. There there comes a time in every young man's life when he needs to be coaxed out of his womb of innocence. Womb of innocence? Uh, just sit right here, son. Your mother and I have been talking, and we think it's time you learn the truth. Daddy, you're not back on the medication. Son, or... underneath all that cute human-like veneer lies the seed of evil. Why do you have to sing, Daddy? I know the truth hurts. Listen up, here's why you can't have that monkey. Monkeys can't be trusted with your business. They're sneaky and dishonest through and through. Monkeys can't speak English, so they can't Do you want to do the story of how the title came about? Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> you got you got to stop me because I keep I keep I want to listen to the whole thing. But um, <laughs> so I, be, I believe the story here is that um, um, at one point his roommate was uh, Dominic Davi of Tsunami Bomb, and um, he was in another room playing Star Fox, and Logan's sister Emily walked in on him shooting a big monkey, and asked him why are you shooting a big monkey, and Dominic said. I don't know. Monkeys are bad people. And that gave Logan an aha moment. <laughs> and within a few hours, he stirred up this little ditty. Yeah, it's a good one. The, one of my favorite things is the the um, harmonica solo. Oh, yes. There. 
That's, this that's I don't a, remember what it is from, but it's it's a recording. It's yeah. a recording from something else. I know, and I <laughs> I didn't know that until I read uh, read up about it. He says um, the harmonica solo in the middle I found on an old tape of harmonica solos. It fits so amazingly well, and it does. It's I, I I thought for sure that was like one of Logan's friends or something recording a harmonica solo, but no, it's it's just an, an old tape. That's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, he, the, and he did this in a bunch of other songs too that are coming up later. I think. Uh, so maybe not harmonica, but other instruments. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so he, I think he he would just play it over and over again. Like, Can you believe how well that fits right there? <laughs> <laughs> How would you even think of doing that? It's amazing. Yeah, no, it's that's incredible. I mean, it sounds like uh, Logan had a lot of like happy little accidents, you know, where like you, you do something and and it, it may or may not work in the way way you wanted it to. And um, I think this song is a prime example that harmonica solo is just excellent. <laughs> and then my and, other um, favorite thing is just when it says, "Monkeys are bad people, and so are you." So are you. <laughs> <laughs> but Daddy, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> and um. It's, it's weird, because there are, there are two versions of the song. One of them is a hidden track on Goodbye My Four track that was recorded in 2001. That's just Logan, and he's doing the whole uh, shtick again, but it's only on a piano. And this one has a whole digital backing band on it. So it, it's interesting how, in contrast to the versions usually on Goodbye My Four track, this one has more arrangement than the one on Goodbye My Four track. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. But it has it has all the kind of like storytelling and different voices and that kind of thing that that we've been seeing Bill Duard. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. And this is, this is a prime example of his him intertwining a story into a song that otherwise is just by itself it's funny enough. And then he has to add on this whole backing story of the father and the son and the monkey in the backpack. And, exactly. Um, and this was um, actually one of like Logan's first hits. Like um, I believe I remember him saying in an interview or something that this one song, because he didn't usually think his, of his music under um, comedy music, but um, with this certain song he decided to put it underneath that, and it was released like the same week as the Tom Green song, the Bum Bum song, came out, and that was put under comedy and um, that was put up on MP3.com so people could upload it. And so when people were trying to check out that Tom Green song, they also found Logan's song underneath the comedy label. And that's how it became like one of the, um, one of the popular songs of that month on mp3.com. Yeah, because I think Tom Green promoted it on his TV show. That, that Like the actual song? Yeah, he promoted to go listen to his own song on mp3.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Bum Bum song. Yeah. yeah, and then people would discover the Logan song yeah, right afterwards. And that, I mean, mm. and that's just, that's beautiful. Yeah, and I, um, I was just gonna say one thing about this album is I think that we'd um, we uh, we had to move. Um, I think uh, the house we were living in in the previous two albums was Joe, our roommate Joe's parents, and they wanted to sell the place or something, so we had to move out. And um, so Joe and I moved in together in a place in Petaluma, and Logan moved in with Dominic. All right. And so during this, all most of these songs, like I would hear them um, as they were being made, but we didn't. It wasn't like before where we kind of actually lived together. Yeah. So like this whole Tom Green thing, like I heard about that on an interview. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, Tom Green trying to reach out to the uh, the internet audience. And I, I will say, going off just a little off topic, Tom Green definitely was a um, a precursor on the internet. He had a website up in like 95 when he was still doing public access and I think that really helped him take off nationally but going back to Logan this uh this song actually um I believe it was on a uh, radio show called the Pabst and Genis Project and Pabst and Genis played it and they got popular there and he would post this on the Dr. Demento message boards and eventually it took off and um, the song actually peaked at number three on the Dr. Demento Funny Five in November of 2000. Cool. 
So this garnered Logan actual national attention. So people, <laughs> he was on a national radio show. People began to wonder who Logan Whitehurst was and who, why are monkeys bad people? And they would listen <laughs> to the song and they would find out. <laughs> yeah, it is one of his most comedic songs. It is. And it, <laughs> it, it's just a great little ditty. And it's amazing that he, he thought, uh, thought up in a few hours. That's, that's the way it gets me. He, it, was, it was an actual aha moment. And he just like, he took it and made something from a little quote of his, of his friend and just built it into a whole song and story and, and everything. A whole package. Yeah, it's one of those like um, things where if you're doing it all the time, if you're yeah. writing songs and recording all the time, then you can kind of do it a lot faster. Yeah, be exactly. Be your, your mind's ready. You're listening. You're that constantly listening for somebody to say something that would be a good title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it seemed like Logan, I mean, the way Logan wrote, he didn't have, he didn't have any self-imposed limits on what he could and couldn't write. Any, anything was up for grabs, it seems. And like monkeys are bad people. Someone would hear that and they're like, "Oh, that's that's kind of funny." And but Logan would hear it and he'd and he'd have an entire song ready. Yeah, actually, um, in some of the later songs on this uh, that I don't like as much, when I was listening to them, I had the feeling that, oh, because he can let himself write a song like this, it makes it so he can also write the songs like "Monkeys Are Bad People" and have it be really fast. Yes, exactly. That, like he's not. Uh, he, He's not waiting until he has a good one before he does it. Yeah, exactly. He 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 um he preps himself essentially for the for the big leagues. <laughs> Monkeys are bad people. <laughs> so and and I mean it's just a great song. Just I, I we got we got to move on to the next track. I know, but Monkeys are bad people. Put a star on it. Yeah, put put a little star. Give it a little sticker. One of the one of the finer Logan Whitehurst tunes that there ever was or were or will be. Up next is a song of pretentious importance called I Am So Important. I wrote a letter to the devil And I sealed it in an envelope of fire And when I got it back it burned up all my mail Maybe next time I'll send him a wire It's pretty. It's very live instrumentation, actually. It is. It, it's. It's definitely. Um. Uh, song-wise, I mean, the the song, the the pieces of the song sound disjointed, as if like they came from different ideas, and he and he put them together. Except with the instrumentation and the way it's put together, it's much better than the disjointed songs on "I Would Be a Biggest Octopus." Oh so yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it it goes. It flows better. Yeah, yeah, and it shows. Uh, the, it has. Pretty cool vocal arrangement and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Logan says, I think this song came from a deep inner well of sorrow and pain where the ghastly monster lives. He smells like eggs. <laughs> I have to agree wholeheartedly on this one. I do as well, yeah. This one, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. I don't think it's going to get a gold star. Yeah. You, know, you were but, saying about songs that, like, um, him, him, giving more attention to like the, like any idea that came to his head gave him um, more free free uh, reign on the better songs like Monkeys Are Bad People and I think I Am So Important is kind of one of those songs in that it's it's just an okay song but he obviously put a lot of work into it in the arrangement and um, how it will all sound and that paid off with songs like Monkeys Are Bad People or the, uh, the next song which I won't mention quite yet <laughs> <laughs> I agree yeah exactly and it, it is, as you say, it's more of a song song than the more experimental stuff early on. Yeah. Oh, and, and you also got the, the payphone theme. And if I had a quarter, I might call someone who cares. Phones going, everywhere. Going back to phones. Phones. They will definitely, they'll, they'll definitely take over this album on a later track. Oh, yeah. But up next, we have a little ditty called Lizard and Fish. Sit 
together and dream. And lizard said, Fish, how's the water today? And fish said, And lizard said, Somehow we'll both get away and be a refugee lizard. Yeah, it's a, this, is a, this one gets a gold star. Hot damn, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah, know, definitely. This this is this is a this is a classic Logan track. I mean, this is, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't think there was a time that he played where he didn't play this song, and have somebody be the fish. I think it's pretty true. It's cool because it was. It's a really good. It's a catchy melody. Yeah. It has a, a good story. It has the exactly. gimmick of the person getting to be the fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um. And, and, it, and it works like the old, it's a, like I was saying earlier about him writing like the old kind of show tune type tunes. This is definitely a key example of, of that kind of thing. And um, and it's a, it's a great track. I love it. Um, Logan says, the song music was fully realized before I knew what it was about. I just found myself singing those words to the music and I wrote it down. A great song to perform live. Yeah, I think he was really proud because they could play the piano. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and like, um, and this is, really is this is a stripped down version. I think um, I think there's two piano tracks, which is kind of apparent um, on the the solo portion where he's playing the um the background piano and the solo piano, but the the tra- the notes overlap, so you can hear kind of like a chorusy flangey kind of effect when they hit the same notes. So it's kind of awkward in that aspect, and then you got the uh, digital clarinet. And of course, the lizard and fish. And um, I, I, and Pee Wee Herman. Part, what I love about this song, yeah, and Pee Wee Herman, <laughs> the the, uh, the fact that he connects it back to a scene from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and <laughs> this is all the story of of two little pets that were in that one scene from the pet store fire in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That that cracks me up. Yeah, that really that really surprised me. I didn't even know that scene, so it, it seemed completely bizarre to me. Oh yeah, no, I, no, because um, I think I listened to the song before I even saw Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and so when I did, I saw there was um there was a scene with a pet store fire, and so he starts bringing out all the animals, and I was like, that's it, <laughs> <laughs> that that's lizard and fish right there, and I I was like, wow, that's that's incredible. Um, it, this one was later remade on uh, Goodbye My Four Track with a with a full band as well, but I mean um this version doesn't lose anything by not having a backing band. It, um, I think either version actually works incredibly well. It's mostly a piano and voice thing. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. it works like that anyway. And that's how I played it live most of the time. So, um, yeah, Lizard and Fish, you get you get a gold star. Boom. And uh, up next is a little ditty, like every little ditty on this album, called Life Is, in parentheses, Peaches and Cream. Then you're a tangerine So I sat right down and I wrote me a song Called Life is Peaches and Cream I say strange things on the telephone When I'm waking from a dream I recite the lines in the back of my mind so this one to me sounds like it was done with a um, like a uh, one of those pre-canned keyboard things. Yes, yes. It's um, it's got like this like really corny uh, <laughs> uh, pedal steel kind of yeah, keyboard thing. Exactly, it's got the whole country thing going. But I mean, well, I mean, the first few times I listened to this track, I, that didn't click with me at all. I like the the way it, it it all went together so well. And um, like the concertina solo and everything, and it wasn't until um, I uh, transferred that video of Christine's of him performing live in the restaurant and he was playing the song, and he and all he was doing was pressing the notes down for this country one. And at one point he hit the wrong note, and he was just like, "See, the thing is, when I hit the wrong notes, the band just keeps playing, so I can pl- I can hit whatever notes, and <laughs> they'll just keep going." Uh, yeah. So yeah. and and it, it just it works so well. Um, yeah, it sounds is, like something you might hear if you went into like a really cheesy bar and there was like a yeah. terrible band playing. 
<laughs> with Logan as the lead singer. And um, I feel like this is definitely one of his underrated songs. It's, it's just really... It's, it's peaches and cream all over. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a good do, tune. Do you know any uh, any more backing story to this? Not really. I don't really remember talking about this one much. But um, yeah, I like the Hokey Pokey reference in it. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> you got to do the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Um... The next track, track eight, is popular. Popsicle. Popular. 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 Adjective. 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 One. Adjective. Regarded One. with favor. Regarded 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 with favor. The song was a outtake from I Would Be a Biggest Octopus. In fact, it was on um, the tape that he gave you, Miscellaneous LW. Oh, really? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't remember. And uh, and you can you can kind of tell it because it uses the same drum machine, the same organ sound that he had on those first two albums. But um, at the same time, it, it works well enough for this one. And um, Logan says... A little jingle about idolatry. It's weird how you can feel so close to people you've never met and who don't know you exist. Is po Popsicle and Popular, are they right by each other in the dictionary? They might be. Um, let's see. T -U no, no. Um, see, Popsicle would have to come before Popular. Interesting. Hmm. I, I mean, I don't get the Popsicle word. It's a it's a registered trademark, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, that's <laughs> that's popular popsicle. Well, it's the only other thing I'll say is it's it's kind of cool how it combines the experimental stuff and the really catchy stuff in one thing. Yes, that that's true. It's um, and it's very the song itself is short. Like it only has four lyrics. I saw you on TV. I bought your CD. I watched your movie. I read your biography. And you have the backing lyrics. Why don't you love me? And, um, I do love you, Logan. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love you, Logan? <laughs> and um, but I feel it, it, it is interesting how he has such a a kind of big meaning behind all of it, like idolatry and worshiping people on TV who don't even know who the heck you are, and how how that's kind of what he was trying to get across, and he just happened to throw in popsicles. Yeah, that's popsicles random. Popsicles. But yeah, I like it. It's good. Yeah. Popular pop school. Let us go to the next song. All right. Well, I don't what remember is the this next one. song, Owen? Well, on the internet, it says it's called Mr. Pity. Mr. Pity? I have no recollection of this one, even though I just listened to it a few days ago. <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> I pity the fool. Weird. For some reason, I never really listened to this one at the time. I think this might be the second time I ever heard it. Interesting. Yeah, no, because this song, 
um, I, I can see how it's forgetful, but yeah, at the same time, it's not a bad song by any means. No, and you can tell he's getting better on piano. Yeah, exactly. And the arrangements are nice. Um, it's going back to the, the show tuny kind of song. And um, I believe Logan even said that um, at that time, that was the best bridge he'd ever written, where he's talking about how nice of a day it is, and Mr. Pity, don't be sad, and the backing vocals are singing, I hate the government. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, and it's not, it's, it's not bad at all. In fact, I think there's a show from um, 03 that's up on YouTube, the lovely folks at Needle Juice got, and um, this is one of the, he actually plays this song. So oh. I, I, feel, I, think, I, I think he had a certain kind of uh, love for this song, and I, I can see why. It's just weird how every time you listen to it, you get like temporary amnesia and you forget the song exists. Yeah, I don't know. This, he never played this one for me, or I never, I didn't see it under development at all, so it didn't stick with me. But yeah, I think it's pretty good, actually. Yeah, I, I pity Mr. Pity because it doesn't. <laughs> it, it's it's so pitiful that it doesn't get the. <laughs> it the gives everybody speak. amnesia whenever they listen to it. I don't. I don't. I don't understand. But it's yeah. No, every, everybody, give Mr. Pity a chance. Everybody, go out and put Mr. Pity on a mixtape. Yes, put put it on a mixtape <laughs> that no one can listen to because they don't accept exactly. <laughs> and or a mix CD, and then people is gonna throw it away because. And so you got to put it on a playlist or uh, Spotify. Get Logan on Spotify. I, he... I checked out Logan on Spotify. There's only two tracks on Spotify that are Logan. That, oh, that's, that's messed me. up. That that's... needs to change. We need to start a petition. Get Logan on Spotify. Dot com. <laughs> dot com. Not the dot net crap. Bless you. Up next is track 10. Atomic. Stew. Woo, woo, woo. That's that's is that his funkiest number of all time? That is that that is that is Logan being the funk master right there, <laughs> giving James Brown a run for his money. Uh, what I, the only thing I know about this one is that this one was done with Tal Kopstein. Yeah, uh, um, and I think I'm, this was done more in the time of uh, uh, at our previous house where, like, it's from the I would be a biggest octopus time. Yeah, I, I believe this one was on your um, miscellaneous LW tape as well. And, ah, um, okay. It seems like, yeah, it seems like um, this was more of a, a towel number that um, Logan helped to co-write. And uh, <laughs> uh, quote-unquote, we busted out the white boy jives and funked everything up. That is, that's excellent. Super but funky. It is, and it's Atomic Stew. Rufus is a Pisces, and the spice is grabbing you. I have no Who idea what Rufus? that means. No idea. Rufus Wainwright? Rufus the Doofus? This is pre-Rufus Wainwright. Well, I mean, he existed. He was there. He took up various amounts of space, but uh, <laughs> no no one knew. <laughs> Maybe Logan knew. I don't know. It's a mystery. One of the many mysteries of this album. Like, who was killed by telephones? Oh, this is one of my favorites. I'm a huge fan of this one. To me, this one's really underrated. I have to agree with you there. This one, um, I, I like, I, it, it's just really interesting, all the phone noises that are used in the song. According it's... to Logan, I like weird noises. 
Phones make weird noises. I like phones. <laughs> phones are deadly. I am scared of them. It all fits together. But yeah, it's. I think the the way of the, using that phone sample or however it was made is yeah. it's pretty unique. It is. It's very rhythmic. Just just uh, like it, it gives it kind of like a robotic feel, like an evil robot coming to kill you. It Except reminds it's me of a robot. It's a telephone. It's a mirror telephone dialing. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of a uh, Paul McCartney song called um, "Temporary Secretary." Has a little bit of a sound kind of like that, but I don't know if Logan even knew that song. Interesting. I'll have um, to check that out. Yeah. But yeah, I guess it's another one of his like sort of rap songs. Yeah, a little bit. I think I consistently like the more rap ones. Yeah. Yeah. This is um. It, it's like Waffle of Death in that he's mostly talking over it anyway. Yeah. Um, the thing that gets me with this song though, it's it's. The way it's mixed is really weird. Like, I think it's the only track on this album that's, like, in mono. And, um, so everything is kind of... It, I don't know, it just sounds very low quality. I don't, I don't know how how or why it was mixed the way it was. So it, it gets... Uh. It, it kind of stands out on the album quality-wise. So I don't, I don't know what the story is behind that, but... Oh, yeah, I mean, so. it, it, it is, like, a really interesting experimental... Um, fascinating track. In fact, um, the song was covered back in the early 2000s by a little-known mp3.com user named Trapezoid, who later went on to become Lemon Demon. His name is Neil Cesariga. And uh, if if you're listening to this, you're probably screaming right now because you know Neil Cesariga is an internet god. But yes, Neil Cesariga used to be a huge fan of Logan Whitehurst. Well, of course he was. Yes, who, who <laughs> wouldn't be? That's the question. But um, a, there's a, a cover song by Neil Cesariga of this song. So uh, if you search the interwebs long enough, you will find it. The internet gods will grant you your wish and you will find this MP3. Well, I'm going to try that. I've never heard that dang version. <laughs> I believe it is. I, believe, I think it's on the uh, Junior Science Club archive underneath uh, covers. Oh, okay. And, um, whoa, what was that? Wait, what was that? Oh my god. Hey man, is that Farkle man? Yeah man, well turn it up man. Ah! Farkle! Yes friends, Farkle is back and it's giganticer than ever. Just look at these new features. All factory interior, rechargeable synchro adapter pack, big green override switch, and much, much more. Like a drink holder, two-tone carbide entryway, final partridge, yellow telephone, automatic G-Williker axle box, and much, much more. Like American Sunday rock by handkerchief. But wait, there's more! Like the generation front page laptop hello bottle cap. Now Farkle has it all. And more! Like the limited edition signed by Elvis himself, four bell handshake, whistle tub, skydiving monkey. Can you get more in the store? Yes, but wait, there's more! But you've already heard it. Let's go to the phones to see what people completely unlike yourself have to say about by the way with that part when it says uh hey man do you like know what that's a reference to um no i don't th there was this um commercial that was on tv when we were kids for this um uh compilation cd called freedom rock okay. and it was like these I, my vague memory of it is it's two sort of hippie guys and they're being like hey man is that Freedom Rock? Well, turn it up, man. <laughs> so this beginning is a reference to that, the Farkle. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> the one good thing I know about this one is um, that ending where he's kind of talking over this music. Yeah. That was a whole nother song that he made. It's like this very steel drummy instrumental. Oh, dang. And I, uh, we could find out what the title is. It's it's out there. Um, and I think that he just thought it was kind of a little bit corny. Yeah. As its own song. So then he made it the ending, the backing music behind that part in Farkle. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you yeah, know, this, this is definitely, this is Farkle through and through. I, th I think it's the second one. Um, this one was on your tape as well. So this was intently for the second one but i don't know why it, it, the second album but i don't know why it never made it onto there but 
Um, I believe, is, isn't that um, Tal Kopstein at the very beginning? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I didn't I read it. I, I have it in my head somewhere that that's Tal Kopstein. I'm not sure why, though. Saying the, the, the is that the Farquhar? Hey, man. Oh, it could be. I don't know. I'm it's hard sure. to tell with Lo- Logan does so many voices. He does. He he really does. And and his friends do a lot of similar voices, so it, it's it's kind of hard to differentiate. Um, yeah. I know there's a Huey Lewis sample in here somewhere. That that <laughs> that made me laugh. That was like oh, oh yes. no, it's it's not Huey Lewis. It's um, that's not. Uh, Randy Newman. Oh, it's Randy. Uh, <laughs> I love L.A. Oh dang! I was gonna oh. mention Randy Newman before because I think that's actually one one of Logan's big influences. Huh. His sort of piano songwriting yeah. stuff. But I haven't personally listened to a lot of Randy Newman, so I don't really know when he's being influenced by him or not. Yeah. But definitely, um, he would talk about Randy Newman a lot. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, no, I th- all I know Randy Newman from is that is Toy Story, so. I, I think he does a lot of songs where there's characters and where there's kind of a... Um, a narrator that isn't entirely reliable. Oh. And so I think some of that kind of storytelling stuff that Logan does comes from Randy Newman. Yeah. No, that sounds interesting. I, I'll, I'll have to check it out. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I, uh, before we, we move on from this track, I, I got to say, I love the jingle, the Farkle jingle that's never mentioned again. Farkle is good. Buy it for me. Because Farkle is something that I want more than life itself. <laughs> Farkle, farkle, farkle. Indistinguishable from the real thing. Now, track 13. Marie, begin parentheses, you're taller than me, end parentheses. This one, I think, probably doesn't rise to the getting the gold star or being like something that everybody would like. Yeah. But I, I quite like it. Yeah, I do. I, I, it's a personal favorite of mine as well. Um, Logan says that, um, I think I was trying to emulate my bandmates and write a love frustration song. It worked out well, and I didn't have to do it again. Though the vocals could have used an overhaul, the accordion and concertina didn't have strep throat, so I kept the song. <laughs> So I, I think I, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I love the lyrics that they're kind of... They're not funny. They're kind of... That thing that I liked on some of his previous songs where they're kind of right on the edge of making sense. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I have a feeling that I know who this, what girl this was about. Her name's not Marie, and I won't All reveal right. it, but okay. this song I always kind of knew who he was talking about. I see. So, so I think it like- is a genuine... Uh, frustrated love song. And there are things above my head, and you can see them. <laughs> that that lyric just right there, that's that's a classic. One of the things that I remember getting in a conversation with someone about on this song is at the end when he says, um, Marie, you're taller than I am. Yeah. And I remember I said something like, I wonder why he did that there. Like, why did he say it different than the other time? And they said that well, it's because to say Marie, you're taller than me is not exactly grammatically correct. Yeah. And so he wanted to show that he knew that. So <laughs> he did it the grammatically correct way at the end. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. That that, <laughs> that 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 sounds like Logan through and through. Yeah, yeah. And I and I got to say this uh, this the song um the next song that comes into mind when I hear this is um the one that shows up on Earth is big. She's ten feet tall. Yeah. So this reminds me of that, just because it's about a, a tall woman. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely connected with that one for me as well. And you know, Owen, I never know if they'll ever find Big Ed's body. It's uh, yeah. It's it's one of the greatest mysteries in life. 
Yes. Who knows what happened to Big Ed? When they find Big Ed's body at the bottom of the creek, I don't want to be in town. When they come to question all the people on my street, I don't want to be. This one, I think, is very uh, Danny Elfman. Influence. Yeah, I, I can hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think it's, it's one of his only, like, dark songs. Like, genuinely, like, just unhappy, <laughs> not so nice songs. Uh, I think the other one being The Ice Cream Man. Yeah, I mean, I think and he did. This is about a uh, murder. Yikes. <laughs> murder. <laughs> Although we did discuss that he has a lot, so has some like mafia things. He does. He, he has some psychopathic tendencies that he tries to keep hidden, <laughs> but they bubble up every once in a while. But um, I think he definitely was a big like soundtrack fan, and yeah. would know and would know Danny Elfman's soundtracks really well. And I think even would make instrumentals kind of along those lines. Yeah. But this is the first song on the album that I can think of that's more of a song that that follows that influence. Yeah, no, I, I can actually hear that. Now that you mention it, I can definitely hear it. Um, apparently, the name of the song comes from a uh, a car shop called Big Ed's Auto Body. Um, Logan says he made some weird song in his head for it, but I don't think they'll use it in any of their ads. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now, Big Ed's Auto Body. That sounds familiar to me. Was that in Santa Rosa or something? I'll have to look um, that up. I'm not sure. Let's do a quick... Google search. Big Ed's Auto Body, California. <laughs> Closed. It's in uh, Campbell. Campbell. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a place we would go to play shows, so sounds uh-huh. feasible. Interesting. Yeah, um, but this song, and I feel like this one gets a lot less attention than the Ice Cream Man, just because Ice Cream Man was on Goodbye My Four Track, and this one's on electrostatic motor but um i I think it works just as well if not more so it it just gives gives off a very eerie feeling yeah it's good so that was big ed's body that was track 14 on how does an electrostatic motor work question mark up next is track 15 down to the sea in ships a little shanty oh Oh, my lordy oh my lordy Oh my lordy, going down to the sea in ships. Oh baby, oh my lordy, oh my lordy, oh my lordy, going down to the sea in ships. When I come home just the other day, oh my lordy, my woman up and run away. Oh my lordy, because of all the games I play. Oh my lordy, oh what a horrible price to pay. Going down, down to the sea in ships. Oh baby, oh my lordy, oh my lordy. Oh my lord, going down to the sea and ships. I, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for this song. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not the best song on the album, but it, it's definitely just, it's, it, it's kind of iconic in its own weird little way. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing that he could do something that sounded so different. Yeah. It's like this sailor's work song. Yeah, exactly. And it, it sounds, it sounds like it actually could be a sailor's work song. I think even... Logan said it was his most realistic song, if only because it could have been a gospel standard. Um, oh yeah, and oh, apparently this one was also based off a failed band name, going ah. down to the sea in ships. Cool. Yeah, and it ha- it's a really impressive vocal, all the different vocal parts, like that yeah. really high one. Oh yeah, <laughs> and how it gets even higher and it gets like even just louder and and <laughs> you can tell he's like stretching his his vocal range right there and I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, in in this kind of music, does it do that thing that he's doing where it keeps modulating up a key? I, I'm not familiar. Um, I don't know. It, it sounds it sounds it just sounds like it would. Um, <laughs> I, th- I think some gospel standards do do that. I see. Um, and <laughs> and the louder guy gets louder and louder and <laughs> he's. <laughs> That, that's my favorite part of the song. It's it's funny. 
when at the end he's like, I can't go any higher or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. I do too. Down to the sea in ships. And up next, we have Hello, comma, Fred the Beard. What's your name? I'm Fred the Beard. What's your name? I'm Fred the Beard. What's your name? I'm Fred the Beard. Why well, ain't never seen a beard with a name like Fred? I'm Fred the Beard. So this is the one I was thinking of when I was like, oh, you can tell he just like sat down and did this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, it is funny. It is yeah. good in a way. Like, it's kind of a throwaway as well. Um, a little bit, yeah. Or I guess maybe it's one of those ones that's good because you can tell that he just did it. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I agree with you there. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't want to do a cover of this. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and no, I, I actually I really enjoy this one, and I think it's definitely um, a lot more um, one of the most comedic songs on this album. Yeah. yeah. Um, along with uh, "Monkeys Are Bad People," and um, apparently he played the drums on a keyboard by hand, which is really hard to do to to keep like a drum time and, and be playing on a keyboard. Oh, he could totally like a drum do that. machine or anything. But that's how he did it. He did it by hand on a keyboard, which that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. You know, he would actually like sit around with people and jam playing drums on keyboard. You could play it. He could play the drums and you could be playing guitar with him or whatever. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, apparently the guitar solo is by someone named Gumby. Is it? Is it the Gumby? The one and only Gumby? Uh, it... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember That's the guitar amazing. saw. Let me listen to it again. Uh, there is one, but it's it's uh, it's uh, obviously like a keyboard guitar solo. Ah. So it's very cheesy. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't know Logan had all these contacts. You know, I mean. Well, you know, he was on MP3.com, so. That's yeah. That's true. You know, I mean, I, I guess when you got the fame, you got the contacts. You know. He was in the industry. He was. And um, if you look up on YouTube, there is a fan animation of this song. Oh, really? And yeah, and it actually it works really well with it. <laughs> you got you got um, the guy, and you got Fred the Beard, and he's talking and stuff. It's 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 funny. I recommend checking it out. Cool. Uh, speaking of which, there's also a fan animation for this next song, one of Logan's more popular songs, "Happy Noodle" versus "Sad Noodle." The sort of life the working stiff dreams about Driving a Studebaker, making pies with his wife Taking a dip in the old swimming hole Yes sir, Happy Noodle had it good and he wasn't complaining He always smiled and tipped his hat and said Nice weather we're having, regardless of the weather Now as most protagonists do He had an antagonist, polar opposite Bent on nullifying his happy existence His name was Sad Noodle A pathetic excuse for an egg and flour mixture With a little extra water just for tears He worked in a successful firm and was under a lot of stress And this is the story of their ultimate battle Happy Noodle versus Sad Noodle. Happy Noodle versus Sad Sad Noodle. Happy Noodle versus Sad Noodle. Happy Noodle versus Sad Sad. Yeah, listening to this one, I realized I hadn't really listened to this version that many times. I think I listened to the later one and the previous one. Without this one, it's a good trick, by the way. If you have a good song, just put it on all your albums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that is a good one. Um, I think the residents did that a few times with like Santa Dog. Every every one, every few years they'll recover a song or something. And um, Logan definitely does that with with this track and a couple others like it. And um, so this is the middle child of the Happy Noodle versus Sad Noodle family. And um, <laughs> you, you can definitely tell it's it's much um, w without the limitations of a four track. He has a lot more tracks to work with, and you can tell that. He's, he's thinking it out more of how it should sound and stuff. Um, personally, I prefer the Goodbye My 4-track version just because this this version, listening to it, it's just missing the the punch of, of the guitars, which I think really adds to it. 
So this one, it, it's there's not really any substantial difference. It's just a bigger recording, isn't it? Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. It's it's, um, and I think this one is as an example of the one predominantly recorded on his computer. So it's it's a little bit more higher fidelity. You can, the bass in particular is a way stronger. You can really tell. Yeah, exactly. And it's got um, the bongos and um, the organ keyboards changed and. Uh, it's playing around a lot more. It's not just a drum machine. It's, it's it's a computer drum, so he's able to do stuff that he wasn't able to do before. And um, he's got backing vocalists this time. Um, Amy Williams, Matt Holland, and uh, Britton Holland. Uh, yeah. These are um, three people we were friends with who were in a band in Sacramento called LGS. Okay. And, um, yeah, so that makes sense. Get nice. those guys on there. Oh, and apparently, um, he says so here in the notes, uh, the person in the restaurant who asked Logan to make the Happy Noodle versus Sad Noodle song was Vanessa Penn. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I thought Who's it was... Vanessa uh, Penn? Um, Vanessa was a friend of ours around Petaluma who um, I think had been in a few bands, but was just somebody that we'd hang out with a lot and was in our, in our friend circle. I see. So, Vanessa Penn, I have to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Good job, Without Vanessa. you, this song would would cease to exist. It would it would be nothing. It, no, nothing would be where track uh, or track seventeen on this album should be. It would just be a, a like a blank track that would be three minutes long. It'd be a very awkward track. We'd have a very interesting time trying to explain it. So, Vanessa, thank you. So much. Not, not only is this track not blank. But it's filled with a classic. Exactly. A classic that Vanessa Penn is responsible for bringing into this world, along with Logan Whitehurst, of course. A classic that can not only amuse you, but I think can actually help with your mental health. Exactly. You know, I mean, um, the studies have shown that that, uh, patients suffering from mental health issues listen to Happy Noodle versus Sad Noodle. Um, Seven out of ten times, they, they get better. And um, they're able to leave their appropriate mental asylums or halfway homes or whatever, and they're actually able to function in society. The other three out of ten listen to uh, the Ice Cream Man and Big Ed's body, and they just get worse. I'm so glad that we have these studies. I know. Yes, these are these are factual studies. Look it up, <laughs> people. Harvard.edu. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, we're so so close to the end of the album here. It, it's so sad. I thought, I mean, 19 tracks is a lot of tracks, yet we, we really, it seems like it, it. we went through them at lightning speed. We did, but I think that we've we've done them justice. We've put, in gold, I, we put gold stars where gold stars should be. We did. Oh, yeah, we, we, we forgot the gold star. Happy Noodle versus Sad Noodle. Gold star. Junk. <laughs> yes. Um... And we got two tracks left. So track 18 is a track um, which I believe comes from the Bible. Uh, the <laughs> quote, at least. It's, um, I like Pez. Okay, come on, Bubba. I'll be the first. Come on, Bubba. All right, everybody come on, Bubba. <laughs> so I think this okay. is what you're talking about, um, about um, them, how Logan liked to like hear the studio, people talking and you're stuff. To repeat after me. Exactly, capture the moment. Yeah, I yeah, like and, and that, this song is definitely a case of that. Like and it's also the okay, Friends wait, thing, because this is just, uh, <laughs> I think this is the band Lucky Strike that he's doing it with. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, it's uh, Logan credited to, uh, like, you got Lucky Strike and um, several members of Tsunami Bomb. You got Emily, Courtney, and Dominic, and oh, a couple okay. friends. And you also had a, a Bubba, of course, and um, Cousin Aaron. Cool. My only thing is, like, is Pez at all good? Pez That's is the only okay. issue I it, take with this song. Is it, It's basically just a little wafer of sugar. It is, but, I mean, I, I guess it depends on, on your, your taste buds. Um, every once in a while, you know, every, every once in a while, you're kind of in the mood for Pez. And nothing else can replace Pez. So I think this song is for moments like that, where you need... <laughs> all, all you can eat is Pez. Nothing will fill that void that only Pez can fill, you know? I, I understand the homage, but... I guess for me, the song would be, I like Pez Containers. Pez Containers? So, are you, so do you like Pez Containers? You don't actually like the actual Pez? I don't think... I, I would put forth that nobody likes Pez. But I mean... You, oh. Damn. I mean, everybody just like a cute little thing with like a head that opens. 
<laughs> Man, I, I don't know. I, I might have to. We'll have to do a whole debate episode on this here because I like Pez. I, li- I like Pez personally just for the, the little tablets. And okay. um, apparently, this song is also dedicated to the Pez Man himself, Brit Holland. So, is Brit Holland the Pez Man? He is indeed. And this is the aforementioned dude who was yeah. in the band LGS who uh, sang on the. Was it Happy Noodle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. He had a little bit of a Pez fetish, for sure. <laughs> nice. And um, and I and I gotta ask, for the record, did Logan buy a t-shirt that says, I like Pez? Sorry, I can't reveal that. Oh, dang. The mystery for- lives on. <laughs> Classified information, I see. I don't want to undermine the song. Or yes. overmine it. Overmine it? <laughs> <laughs> Minded of all of its pez and glory. I wonder if this would be a copyright violation. I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure pez is trademark, but he's used like popular popsicle. That's a trademark. And um, in uh, the, sh- the, the Sweepy song on the Very Tiny Songs, he mentions post-it notes. And at the very end, he says post-it notes is a registered trademark of the whatever corporation. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. But he seems to have, have gotten away with it. Um, at least for now. Hopefully we're not going to bring on some Supreme Court case on the song. Oh, that would no. be unfortunate. <laughs> they destroy all copies of I Like Pez in every t-shirt that says I Like Pez. Yeah, that I think sad. I think we're safe. I think we're safe. I think we are too. I think we've milked this joke for all it's worth. So let's go on to <laughs> the final track on this album. Now this one has a couple different um, a couple different titles. I'm trying to look up the, um, the, the 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 title for the final version, but the first version of it was called End Credits. Ah. And I'm looking up right now what the uh, last title was for it. On the internet, it's called A Call to Arms. A Call to Arms, that's right. Yeah, the, um, so it's called A Call to Arms, it's called End Credits, it's called The End. This is one of, um, one of a couple of Logan tracks that has multiple names and no one really knows the real name. So for convenience's sake, we're going to call this a call to arms track. And this, this is the last track, so surely this is going to reveal how an electrostatic oh, yes. motor works. Yeah. All right, I'm ready. All right. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> it's positive and negative, and the. The negative charge flows into the positive I'm, charge. Oh my god. I'm, oh. Oh my god. I know how it works. <laughs> I'm getting it. It's like it's 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 like my brain is just re- reconfiguring itself and I I, I I understand it all now. And yet I if anybody asked me I wouldn't be able to say in words. It's just something you have to know. It's like talking about God. Exactly. You know, yeah. electrostatic motors are like God in that <laughs> you, you, you can't put it into words. <laughs> but everyone just needs to go listen to this album and then they'll feel it too. Yes. If you want to know the word of Logan Whitehurst, have you heard the word of Logan Whitehurst? And uh, listen to the CD and you, you'll know the word, the, the true word, the word of Logan. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> What, what what are your thoughts on this album, Owen? Um, I think it's it's really good. It has a bunch of Gold Star songs. Yeah. Um, what I notice in it is it getting even less experimental than the previous one, yeah. in terms of there being like tracks that are just experiments. I re- I think there is pretty much none of those. Um, but tracks still have experimental parts in them. Oh uh-huh, yeah. And this one, I see him kind of um, spreading out a little bit more in terms of trying, in a few songs, and trying more soundtracky kind of sounding things. Like the last yeah. song. And, yeah, especially the last song. Yeah. Um, and what was it, Big Ed's Body? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's really good, and it... Yeah, it has a lot of songs on it that um, I think are Logan favorites. What do you think, Connor? What do I think? 
Well, I gotta say, this is this is indeed a classic Logan album, and you're you're absolutely right. This is he's reached a point where he's no longer experimenting. He's got experimental parts within the songs, and his songwriting has gotten to a point where where the songs themselves are actually like really good, like really good songs, like classics, and um. And from here, it just gets better. That's that's the amazing part. Yes. So we're in the if we're doing a Beatles analogy, this would be like the Rubber Soul or Revolver, yeah. maybe this or is, something. This is Rubber Soul, babe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so yeah, this uh, how does an electrostatic motor work? Is Logan Whitehurst's Rubber Soul? It works pretty well. That's what I think. I have to agree with you there. I wish there was higher quality of this because um, the only version online was from mp3.com and back then I guess there was a, a limit to how how uh, fast the bitrate could go so it's only it's stuck at 128 and uh, so that's unfortunate but you know I'm glad we have it it's it's better to have it and and it's low quality than to have nothing at all. Well said, my friend. Well said. So, how, how does an electrostatic motor work? I don't know. But by the time you listen to the end of this album, you will know. So this has been Talk in the Microphone with Connor Nyberg and Owen Otto. We hope you have a pleasant evening. Thank you for tune joining in. us. <laughs> tune in next time when we review Logan's next album, Earth is Big. It is. Until then... Keep your eye in the sky. <laughs> and rock on.